What is going on, college basketball fans? Welcome back to another video. Today we got our second chance bracket because you guys know I need a second chance. I mean, everybody does. There's no perfect brackets. No perfect brackets this year. Kind of, you know, uh, surprising because for the most part, we're getting a chalk madness this year. I mean, there's one double-digit seed in the Sweet 16, and that's NC State, not even a mid-major. We have no mid-majors in the Sweet 16. Yeah, we have San Diego State, but the Mountain West, is, are they really considered a mid-major at this point? We know Gonzaga's not a mid-major. Um, yeah, kind of insane the amount of chalk that we got this year. But that's going to make for a very entertaining second weekend of March Madness. I was still very entertained by the first weekend of March Madness. And, yeah, I'm super excited to get into it. I just want to say subscribe if you guys are new. We do a ton of college basketball content here on the channel. We got lot, lots and lots and lots of good stuff coming out on the channel. You don't want to miss it. And, yeah, guys, I'm ready to get started. I just want to say real quick, I've been seeing your guys' comments. I've been seeing your guys' tweets over the whole first weekend of March Madness. No, I'm not in the March. I'm not in the Buffalo Wild Wings box out commercial. I'm not. I I know I look like him. Okay, I'm not. Last year I looked like Ryan Cockbrenner. This year I got longer hair and I look like the freaking Buffalo Wild Wings guy. I'm not him. Okay, I just want to say that. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get into these predictions. We got some really good matchups. I mean, really, all of these matchups have a pretty good storyline. Um, and just like. They're just good matchups. Like, the way these two teams match up, whoever wins these are going to be very, very deserving of making to, making it to the Elite Eight. So, it's going to be some high com competitive basketball. And let's get it started. So, we got UConn and San Diego State rematch from last year's national championship game. And, wow, both these teams have looked very, very good as of late, and especially in the last round. I mean, UConn beat up on not only Stetson, but on Northwestern. And they, they just look so, so good and like they're going to be unbeatable. But San Diego State, man, they've been looking really, really good as well. I mean, to go into the second round, yeah, they were facing Yale, but they beat up on Yale. And that Yale team beat a very, very good Auburn team. So, yeah, I, I don't – I think I'm going to go UConn in this matchup. I just – even though I really do like Jaden Ledee, I feel like Donovan Klingon down low is a lot of size they're going to put on him. Um, they just have a lot of guys that can shoot the rock. They had the best set offense in the entire country. And at this point, the way UConn's looked so far, yeah. I know everybody's saying, yeah, they're going to be back-to-back -back champions, back-to-back -back champions. I was saying that, but, like, we haven't seen back-to-back -back champion in a very long time. So wasn't really sure if it was going to happen. But they, they look really, really good, and it's definitely looking like a possibility. Next up, we got Illinois versus Iowa State. This is like the big matchup game that I was super that I'm super excited to watch because it's Illinois, one of the best offenses in the country, versus Iowa State, one of the best defenses in the entire country. And I'm not really sure where I want to go with this. Like, this is very 50-50 of a matchup for me. I don't know who's gonna win. I, I always tend to lean, I want to lean more towards the defense. But I could see Illinois just going crazy. I mean, Taron Shannon Jr. has not slowed down from that Big Ten tournament run. He has been killing it in the NCAA tournament as well. But Illinois also played, you know, Moorhead State and Duquesne. Like, Whereas Iowa State, I, in my opinion, played two much better teams in Drake and Washington State. I got to go with the defense in this one. I got to go with Iowa State here to move on to the Elite Eight. They're just so good. And, and honestly, I feel like I trust Iowa State a little bit more here to get the job done. Next up, next region, we got Houston versus Duke. And wow, I, I the way that Duke and, and especially Jared McCain, the way Jared McCain was shooting... In their last game, like, against James Madison, that's the thing. Like, James Madison, very good mid-major. Like, I thought James Madison definitely had a shot at Duke. And I think a lot of people did. But then that game started, and Duke was just off to the race. Right off the start, Jared McCain was knocking down a ton of threes. And if we get that Duke team, uh, and Houston's not playing that great a defense, like, if that game is being called by the refs like it was again in the Houston-Texas A&M game, 
Houston could definitely be in trouble against Duke because Texas A&M was hanging in there, even with Wade Ta Taylor having the worst shooting performance. I don't know, maybe Jamal Ash Mashburn for New Mexico had a pretty bad uh, shooting performance, but Wade Taylor is probably the worst of the tournament so far, and they still almost beat Houston. It went to overtime. I don't know. Like I just feel like if Houston's not locked in defensively, Duke is going to win this game. <sighs> but I can't, I, I'm not going to go with the Dukies on this one. I got to go with Houston. I just got to trust their defense. I think they had that scare in the second round. And that they got through it. They got through it, right? You know, Emmanuel Sharp, LJ Cryer, they fouled out. In that game against Texas A&M as well, like I said, if the refs are calling the game like they did against Texas A&M, Houston could get in foul trouble. Duke will probably win the game. But I think they had that scare in the second round. They're going to be motivated. They're going to get back focused. They're going to be ready to play. They're going to be locked in, playing their best basketball. Houston wins. NC State versus Marquette. And here's the thing. I really don't want to go chalked here. like, But this is definitely the, the direction that it's kind of looking like the tournament might go like I definitely don't think all four one seeds make the final four or anything like that but Marquette's looking pretty tough Marquette's looking pretty tough but NC State is on such a good run right now they were played so many games so many days in a row it was five games five days in the in the ACC tournament two games and four days uh in the March Madness tournament so far. So they get a little bit of a break finally. Let's lock in. DJ Burns, the best story of March Madness so far this season. We got to go NC State right here to continue on the run. I mean, DJ Burns, DJ Horn didn't even hit a shot until the last minute of the Oakland game. And NC State was still able to find a way against a very hot Oakland team that was just killing it. And I just like... DJ Burns, if he has you one-on-one -on -one in the post, he is going to score, and he is very underrated when it comes to passing out of the post because the way Oakland was doing him, every time he would catch the ball down low, he was getting doubled, but he was finding those shooters, and NC State was knocking down the shots. So I really like NC State here to knock off Marquette. I think Marquette, you know, even against Western Kentucky in the first round, it was close throughout the first half. And they, they were able to pull away. It was close against Colorado, too. That's a very good Colorado team. I think NC State definitely can do it. I think Marquette is the better team, more talented team all around, especially with Kolick and Cam Jones. I think Cam Jones is so, so underrated. A lot of people talk about Tyler Kolick with Marquette, but Cam Jones is the main scorer on that team. Tyler Kolick, more of the facilitator. He can score, too, but Cam Jones has really been going crazy. It's going to be up to how are these guys going to perform like uh, Ross, Stevie Mitchell, Igudaro, those type of players. How are they going to perform on Marquette? If they play good, they're going to win. If NC State can slow those guys down and DJ Burns does his thing, NC State wins. Next up, bottom region. Or wait, did we do? No, we didn't do final four match or elite eight matchups yet. Okay, next up. North Carolina versus Alabama, and, and I'm not going to lie. We saw this. I'm pretty sure we saw this game earlier in the year. North Carolina won. I feel like similar story here. I just think two very good offensive teams. Alabama just doesn't have much defense. Alabama just doesn't have much defense. I don't think they have the front court. I think Armando Baycock can have a big game in this game. And I'm pretty quick on that. I think, you know, Harrison Ingram is going to be huge in this game. I mean... I just think like Grant Nelson's not enough. Like Aaron Estrada and of course Mark Sears are super good on Alabama, but I feel like they got kind of lucky to get to the Sweet 16 because they got to play um, Charleston and then Grand Canyon. And Grand Canyon's a really good team. So is Charleston, kind of. But like I don't know. I just feel like they they kind of got a little bit lucky. And the way North Carolina handled a Michigan State team that just handled Mississippi State, North Carolina is on a mission. And yeah, I got UNC moving on to the Elite Eight. Next up, we got Clemson versus Arizona, and I really like this Clemson team. 
I just don't know if I see it. Like, I definitely could see it because Arizona could definitely choke. But Arizona has been playing so damn good, man. Like, just offensively, whenever I watch Arizona, and I've watched every March Madness game this year. And I, of course, have watched a ton of college basketball all season long. Cause, but, like, when I watch, watch Arizona, I was like, wow, bro. Like, they score at such a high rate. Like, this might be the best offense in the country. And, and there are no slouch on defense either. So, I just don't see Arizona losing right now. And I really want to see these two teams go at North Carolina and Arizona because they have been so hot throughout this tournament. I have to have to see it. So I am going to go with um, Arizona to get past Clemson. But shout out to Clemson, though. They played a very good game against Baylor and New Mexico. Like, they dominated New Mexico. They played very good against Baylor. Baylor was starting to come back. But reality, they controlled that entire game against Baylor. And they kind of have the great matchups for Baylor as well. So, but yeah, they're playing very good. That's going to be a very good game against Arizona. But I really want to see this Elite Eight matchup. Purdue versus Gonzaga. This is what I'm talking about. Like, all these matchups are so good because Gonzaga, yeah, they're a five seed. And everybody's like, including myself, this is what I was saying. Gonzaga's overseeded. Like, there's no way they put them as a five seed. Like, come on. But Mark Few has proven, even though he's never won a national championship with Gonzaga, he's proven time and time again he is not going to lose in the first weekend of March Madness. Like, you can forget about that. They are going to make the Sweet 16 at least. And here they are again, not only in the Sweet 16, but looking absolutely fantastic while doing it. Like, and I was coming into this, like, thinking, like, oh my gosh. Purdue, I definitely probably am going to have them to the final four. But, like, I don't know. I think I might actually have a Gonzaga upset here. And you guys might call me crazy because Purdue's been playing very good. But I just feel like Gonzaga's been taking it to another level. And the thing about Gonzaga is they have the big men to guard Zach Eady and Trey Kaufman Wren because I got to give Trey Kaufman Wren his credit down low. Whenever he's been in the game for Purdue, sometimes he's in the game at power forward, even with Zach Eady. Sometimes he's in the game by himself when Zach Eady needs a rest. Either way, he is in there on the offensive glass in the post, like putting up points, and he can shoot the occasional three as well. So Gonzaga has the bigs, EK, you know, uh, Antoine Watson, Ben Gregg. Like, they have these guys, these bigs that are able to guard Zach Eady, and they have the offensive firepower to keep up with this Purdue team. The only thing is, we've seen this matchup earlier in the season, and Purdue won. Purdue won by, I think, 10 or 11, 12 points. And I just don't know if I can pull the trigger on it, because I feel like Gonzaga can win this game, especially the way they've been playing in the tournament. But... I just think Purdue, they're going to be focused, man. They dominated Utah State. They were shooting very well. I got to go with Purdue. I got to go with Purdue. Next up, we got Creighton, Tennessee. And if it's not Illinois, Iowa State, Creighton, Tennessee is the matchup I'm most excited for for the Sweet 16. I mean, come on. Baylor Shireman versus Dalton Connett. I mean, whoo. The white dudes are going crazy this year. I cannot lie. I mean, come on. This is a star-studded matchup. I cannot wait to see this game. I'm so happy that both these teams made the Sweet 16 because this is going to make for an amazing game, an amazing matchup. Ryan Cockburner versus Tennessee's, you know, solid. It's just all around going to be a great matchup. I think the difference maker is Trey Alexander. I think Trey Alexander is so darn good. At defense, offense, such a good two-way player. And I got Creighton winning this one. I think I trust McDermott as a coach more than Rick Barnes for sure. I'm going to go with Creighton here to win that matchup. So we have our Elite Eight matchups. Let's see who we got in the Final Four. UConn, Iowa State. 
And I'm not going to lie, it's kind of hard to pick against UConn right now, the way that they're playing. I think if they get past San Diego State in their defense, Iowa State probably has a better defense this year, but they're going to be ready for that. Like, they just played a game where they're going to be prepared to play a team like Iowa State. And as much as I really like this Iowa State team, I would like to see them go further. And I, I kind of want to see somebody new make the Final Four, especially out of this region, um, other than UConn. I just got to go UConn there in that game. North Carolina versus Arizona. Caleb Love, revenge game, playing his former team in North Carolina. That is going to be absolutely amazing. I can, I really hope we get that matchup. I think we will, honestly. Um, I could see Clemson maybe knocking off Arizona, but... I really want to see this matchup in the Elite Eight. <sighs> Omar Ballo versus Armando Baycott. Caleb Love versus uh, Cormac Ryan. You got Kylan Boswell, RJ Davis. I mean, come on, man. I kind of like Arizona in this game. I think I'm going to go with Arizona. I mean... I think I was a little bit hesitant on Arizona and like my main bracket just because they've been losing earlier in the year, uh, earlier in the tournament the past couple of years. But this year they look really, really good and they don't look like they're going to slow down either. So I think I'm actually going to trust them a little bit here to make it to the final four. I'm going to have Arizona move on. Next up, we got NC State versus Houston. I really would like to see NC State do it, but I feel like Houston is like a, a mashup nightmare for a team like NC State. Like, I think that they definitely could beat a team like Marquette. That's pretty realistic. And maybe if Duke can knock off Houston, I feel like, you know, NC State just beat Duke in the ACC tournament. So, like, honestly, NC State matches up a lot better with Duke. I just feel like Houston, the way they play defense, the way that I feel like they could actually guard DJ Burns down low one-on-one -on -one with guys like um, uh, Juwan Roberts, um, and they have a ton of good defensive guards that are going to be there, going to hit the rotations. Jamal Shedd's going to get his steals. Like, I just feel like this is a, night, uh, a matchup nightmare for NC State. And sadly, I am going to have them go out here at the Elite Eight. This is where I had them. I actually had them in the Elite Eight in my original bracket. So I'm going to have them go out the same place that I originally had them go. I just feel like that's a horrible matchup for them. And yeah, next up we got Purdue versus Creighton. And Ryan Cockburner on Zach Eady. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, you got, you know, really Stephen Ashworth, Trey Alexander, Baylor Shireman. I feel like Creighton, you know, I feel like Purdue definitely has the more depth than Creighton. Or uh, Purdue definitely has more depth than Creighton. You know, Lance Jones, uh, Marcus, or uh, Mason Gillis. You got uh, Brayden Smith, who's been playing better. Fletcher Lawyer, uh, Trey Kaufman Wren. Like, they're the deeper team. But I feel like Creighton has higher uh, what's it called? Star power. And I feel like Ryan Cockburner, if he stays out of foul trouble, he could get this Creighton team to the final four with his defense on Zach Eady. Give me Creighton to upset Purdue three over one in the elite eight. Creighton makes their first ever final four in school history. Now we have our final four. We have UConn, Arizona. We have Houston and Creighton and Ooh, this is, man, these are two, four amazing teams. And I'm going to start off on this side because I know where I want to go with the, on this side. I want to go with Houston. And I just feel like they match up really well against Creighton here just with their defense and just being, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like both of these teams are actually pretty comfortable playing in a close, tight game. And Crane may have more offense. That's the thing. But I, I'm going to trust Creighton here. I'm going to trust Creighton here. Or I'm going to trust Houston here to get it done over Creighton. I just feel like their defensive guards, Emmanuel Sharp, LJ Cryer, Jamal Shedd, are going to be enough to get past Creighton. UConn and Arizona... 
that's tough because like I could see a guy like Tristan Newton just coming out of nowhere and having an insane final four. And man, I got to go with UConn. I mean, I just feel like UConn and Houston are still the two best teams in college basketball. Yeah, Houston hasn't looked the best against Texas A&M. But honestly, I feel like with that scare, it's going to be like, okay, refocus. Let's start playing our best basketball because we know now anybody can beat us. Like, this is not a joke. We have to stay focused at all times. And I think Kelvin Sampson is going to reiterate that to his squad. We're going to get it, uh, Houston, to the Final Four this year. UConn, Houston. I'm going to stick with my original pick from my original bracket. They're still alive. Give me the UConn Huskies to win the 2024 National Championship. Danny Hurley goes back to back. And, yeah, I think that, I mean, the way their offense is, and they play good defense as well, they just have the best set offense in college basketball, running so many off-ball screens for their shooters. Um, they have guys that can offensive rebound. They have guys who can spot up shoot. They have guys that can dribble drive. They have guys that can pick and roll. And they just like combine all this together with such smoothness. It is crisp. And I just think even though UConn, yes, they lost what three starters from yeah because Alex Caravan Tristan Newton are back so yeah they lost three starters from last year's championship team I think they've done enough to rebuild this team and kind of like plug pieces back in to this offense that I mean I just think that a guy like Tristan Newton is gonna go absolutely berserk in the final four final four most outstanding player I got Tristan Newton and not only for his offense, but his defense on Jamal Shedd and also Kylan Boswell. I think he could hold Kylan Boswell because Kylan Boswell, that's the key to beating Arizona. If you can hold him and slow him down, it makes it harder for the rest of his team because he is the playmaker on that team. I feel like Tristan Newton holds him to like under five points, honestly, and, and just shuts him down, and that's how they get past Arizona, and then he plays good defense against Jamal Shedd while also maybe having a triple-double or close to it in one of these games. So, yeah, I got UConn winning the national championship, staying with my original pick. Let me know what you guys think about my picks. I hate that this year is kind of chalky. I mean, we only have one double-digit seed in the Sweet 16, which is insane to me, but that just makes it mean that we're going to have some awesome, awesome matchups coming up so i'm super excited for it let me know what you guys think about my bracket let me know who you guys have in your second chance final four down below in the comment section and yeah guys thank you so much for watching